Welcome to the 2020 Paths for All Virtual Volunteer Awards. I'm Fiona Stalker. We're not in the Scottish Parliament. Instead, we're in the Cunegar Loop in Glasgow in the beautiful outdoors in the autumn sunshine. Well, the pandemic hasn't meant that volunteers have stopped caring for the communities. In fact, exactly the opposite. And we're going to be hearing about some of those amazing stories today. This is the 11th awards ceremony and there are 57 nominations this year, right from the Isle of Skye down to the Scottish borders and everywhere in between. This is where I spent a lot of time walking during the initial lockdown, just to clear my head, get some perspective on what was happening and get energised, get those endorphins going. And it might not surprise you that the amount of walking that Scotland's been doing during lockdown has gone up quite considerably compared to before lockdown. Well, let's see if we can continue that and let's hear some of those amazing stories. Let's get on with these awards. This is where I spent literally hours walking during lockdown, just reconnecting with nature, getting those endorphins going, getting a sense of perspective. And it might not surprise you that the amount of walking that was done in Scotland went up during those initial restrictions compared to beforehand. And that's what Pass for All wants to do, get everyone in Scotland out walking. Let's hear some of those stories and get on with the awards. So the first award, Community Path Volunteer of the Year. Nina Saunders from Bonnyfield Local Nature Reserve in Falkirk. Let me tell you a bit about Nina. She's a volunteer path warder and a ranger for her local nature reserve, which she visits every day. And I'll tell you a few of the things that she does. She feeds the birds, she deals with wildlife crime, she picks up litter, she monitors badger sets, she reports access issues, and my absolute favorite, she helps with the spring frog migration. Sentence I didn't think I'd ever say, but I love that. Let's find out more about the Community Path Volunteer of the Year, Nina Saunders. Bonnyfield's a small nature reserve close to the centre of Bonnie Bridge. It was once a um, sand and gravel quarry about 20 years ago. It was planted up by um, lots of volunteers and local people and eventually we have a, a place like we, we have today. Falkirk has over 600 kilometres of core paths, so um, our paths um, take a lot of looking after, um, hence the reason we have volunteers to look after all these paths. We have a very small community group that helps to make decisions about the nature reserve and Nina started coming along to that and then she became a, a path warden as well. During lockdown she practically well, she did. She ran the nature reserve and she kept it going. I got in contact with the ranger services in Falkirk who introduced me to Fiona, the ranger, and started sitting on a, a little local committee um, who were interested in, in looking after the reserve. And I chose the Bonnyfield Nature Reserve because it's very local. I'm in here every day walking the dog. Is that something that I can incorporate into my daily routine? What makes the Nature Reserve special is just meeting all the local people using the reserve and making friends and seeing all the wildlife, the birds, the butterflies, the flowers, and things like that. The best part about being a path warden is knowing that I'm making a difference to the local area. Ongoing kind of everyday things that really make a difference to the reserve and reporting back any issues and incidents that happen as well so that there's an awareness of what's going on. I, I do this because I really care about the reserve and, and I'm here every day so it makes sense for me to, to do these things. I'm really quite humbled actually. Knowing that I make, make a difference to the local area is, is, is what it's all about. It's not about winning necessarily. I haven't done it for that reason at all. Without her, the place would have had a lot of problems which we couldn't deal with because we weren't on site.
Now this one is the Community Path Volunteer of the Year Special Mention Award it goes to 11 year old Matthew McDonald from Linwood in Renfrewshire. He created the Toddle Tots Fairy Trail. I had to say that a few times before I got that right. So during lockdown, which was tough on a lot of families and a lot of kids, Matthew created this magic fairy trail. And when his sister was asleep, his wee sister was asleep, he designed, painted and weatherproofed these wee fairy doors that he hung on a trail along woodland. And he had to deal with it being vandalised, strewn with litter, getting overgrown. But he and his dad, his sidekick, picked the litter every week and fixed the fairy doors, creating something really, really special during the open. Let's meet our Heroic Community Path Volunteer of the Year Special Mention Award winner, Matthew. Well, the idea came from a couple of years ago. My mum and her friend Gemma, who started Toddle Tots, um, wanted to do a fairy trail, but they never managed to get it up and running. So this year we thought it'd be good for families to be able to enjoy it during lockdown. Um, ten doors so that children can come and look at, and there's an online form that children can fill in to receive a free fairy door and a letter from the fairies. So round about the start of lockdown, Matthew picked up the idea of the fairy trail and we thought it'd be a good time to do it, to try and encourage families who might have come out with us to start coming and using this area in the way that we'd really hoped that they would. Matthew's a bit like a dog with a bone and he's quite determined so if he decides to do something it gets done. One of his goals for this summer was that he decided he wanted to participate in Operation Bletchley which is a walking challenge set up by ABF the Soldiers Charity. So the fairy trail was a really good way for him to use those miles in a productive way and not just be walking laps around the area. But then over and above that, wherever somebody completed the feedback form, he'd hand deliver a lot of the letters, which was really positive for him because it allowed him to, to reach that target and actually blast it right out of the water. It feels really nice to be able to come and fix things for when all the doors are here on a Sunday morning, but sometimes they're not and we need to fix them. There's a little boy who we met one morning who has learned to count by using the fairy doors. Lots of people have given us positive responses about people stealing them. Well, I find walking lots of fun and I enjoy helping out Toddle Tots. Well, it's good that it's bringing us closer together on a Sunday morning. Um, it's really exciting. I didn't know that my mum had nominated me for it. It was a big surprise when I received the email saying that I'd won. But the opportunity to thank any volunteer, I think, rewards all volunteers because those people who know that what they're doing matters know that it's being felt, even if it isn't them that's being named specifically for it. And every volunteer that gets an award through Paths for All this year, I know that they're representing the others as well. So this is the Community Path Group of the Year, which goes to the Darkwood crew in Paisley in Renfrewshire. What an incredibly inspirational group of people. They are regenerating their derelict village green to have new walking and cycling paths. However, of course, the pandemic put a stop to this work. But instead, they got out and about and delivered food parcels and prescriptions. So they got the keys to the local minibus, they were collecting food and toiletries from local supermarkets and organising social isolation street bingo, which I think sounds amazing. Let's meet the Darkwood crew in Paisley, who are our Community Path Group of the Year. back about three years ago, it became very clear to the local community that one of the first priorities they would like to see visually was uh, the environment all over Fergusley Park. This area here, which is called the Village Green, this was one of the areas that the community were more or less saying we would like to see it really tidied up. There's paths in that go all through here that's never been used. So it was very easy for the Community Council and the Environmental Subcommittee to say, right, well, maybe the way to tackle this then. Is there any community members out there who would be willing to get themselves involved. That was where the Dartmouth crew was actually born out of. Four or five right at the start, I said we would like to get involved in that. So right away that's the process started. As soon as somebody in a community says we want to get involved, then you know you're on your way. And you can see by just looking around here, the difference that these people have made to this area. And that's a real benefit of organisations like this. It's not just about cutting the grass and tidying up the past and doing everything else. It's about social interaction. All they want to do is continue to help their neighbour. That's the great thing about Ferguson Park. It's about looking after and helping people who are less fortunate than yourself. 
since its inception, if you like, it has grown, gone on to identify five key focus areas in the community. Isolation and loneliness, food insecurity, fuel poverty, positive about mental health, and the overriding one, which is the local environment. And really, Dartwood Crew have tried their best to respond to community need, but weave that entire, entire environmental agenda into almost everything that they've done. So they then started to get involved, the schools themselves, they couldn't hold their sort of kind of prom. So the Dartwood Crew organised an outdoor prom for the two primary schools. And the kids absolutely loved it. So again, what that's doing is building up the capacity of this community. You've only got to look at them as it's like in a cold day here just now. Everybody's got a smile on their face because they're enjoying what they're doing. And that was one of the main reasons why I thought it was right to nominate the Dartwood Crew for this particular award. To have won an award for tidying up your own part of town, that's, that's a fantastic accolade and certainly unexpected but welcome nonetheless. This is Path Skills Volunteer of the Year. It goes to Bethany Patterson from Perth College in Perth. Now this is about giving young people the practical path building experience. Now Bethany did this by doing all the theory in the classroom and then by mobilising her classmates to go out and do the actual practical path building work. It actually gave her the confidence to apply for another course and helped in things like leadership and building relationships with peers and staff members. So let's hear from Path Skills Volunteer of the Year, Bethany Patterson. So I'm Caroline Cow, and I'm a lecturer at Perth College and I work within the New Opportunities Department. Uh, New Opportunities Department is a part of Perth College that offers help with people with difficult transitions into work or into education. And one of the main groups I work with is a group called Moving On. So the course actually runs for about a year and we work on uh, resilience and life skills with the young people. As a group we did this project and it involved going out in the cold and a bit of the wet as well and mud and it was physical practical work that we were doing and not all the students were very um, interested in doing that or very keen. Bethany however from the minute that we started it was just she was so motivated and she motivated everybody else as well and she just worked she worked her socks off and she benefited so greatly from it as well that I felt that she had to get a personal award for it. Um, well, cut down branches, had to wear a helmet if it's above your head, cleared paths and um, it <laughs> just the fact that it was like outside and quite enjoy like practical things and that, so it's better than writing. It's not as bad as you think it would be, it's actually easier when you start doing it. It just sounds really boring and then once you do it, it's it's good. <laughs> just thought it would be learning algebra on that. <laughs> it just feels like getting somewhere in life, I don't know, just, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's really important that young people, it, they acknowledge the work that's been done and for someone like Bethany, for someone to actually say you have really done a really good job there and to get some credit for what she's done is, is fantastic and it's well deserved and although they're perhaps embarrassed, don't want to show that they're, they like the experience of being um, chosen. Deep down, it is it's very good for their confidence. So the Paths Skills Group of the Year Award goes to Forth Valley College in Stirling. Now these students took two days to clear a path in a country park in Stirling. They learnt how to use tools and work safely, chopping down overgrown branches and digging drainage ditches in heavy rain, wind and even snow, unlike the beautiful sunshine today which has made me put my shades on. And they did this by excellent teamwork and jelly babies. I love that. So the sweetie loving Path Skills Group of the Year are Forth Valley College in Stirling.
So I work with a work start group at Forth Valley College who are young people who have faced barriers to learning throughout the schooling um, education and they come to college as a bridge between um, education and the young you know, being a young person and into the adult world. Um, so we linked up with Pass for All and had a meeting with Tom, one of the workers there, and arranged a project locally where we could help out and improve the, the Path network. Um, and it's just been a really great project to be involved in. I think that's an amazing course, which I've been doing for now officially a year. I did it last year, it's my second year. And pretty much I've been doing tons of work. Most on the Fridays I've been doing a lot of charity work, such as with Pass for All, you know, we did the Path work. And then um, we've done help with um, the chat, homeless, so sort of like food banks. And we've done tons of things. So pretty much here I've learned tons of things. I've got my national qualifications. I've got my um, cooking qualifications too. <laughs> I've been getting tons of many things here, learning health and wellbeing, core skills. It's been a massive part of my life. We went to the Plain Country Park and we helped use tools and stuff like that to clean up the paths and the branches and stuff like that to make the path clear because like, mostly everybody goes there like over dogs or whatever like yeah, just walking and yeah we just done a bit of cleaning and stuff like that we had like a little bit of like sweets and stuff like that and uh, the weather was br brutal as well sometimes it'd be like sunny and rain and be windy so like yeah I was so proud of the Work Start team because it took so many of them out of the comfort zone. Um, so many of the young people aren't outside a lot and doing this physical work. Um, and it was a brand new experience for them. The weather was quite inclement on one of the days. Um, we had hail and rain and snow and they just kept working all the way through it. And I just think that whole attitude towards the task in hand um, and the whole um, the team that they formed doing this project was just fantastic. Of course, I think if people are struggling with their life and they can't get on track and they've either failed at school or they've had a tough time and they, they don't feel like they can go somewhere, this, class, this course is setting me right up for life again. So I'm really, I recommend to anyone that's having a struggle in their life. Handling the Scottish weather is a key life skill that needs to be mastered. To tell us a bit more about severe weather is the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform, Rosanna Cunningham. It's good to join this year's Paths for All Volunteer Awards, recognising the work of the Community Path volunteers and young people and celebrating the invaluable work they do on Scotland's path networks. The great work that is being done helps to keep our walking routes safe, accessible and enjoyable for everyone. So congratulations to all those who were nominated and especially to the winners, Nina, the Darkwood crew, Bethany, Forth Valley College and Matthew for his amazing Toddle Tots fairy trail. I've been inspired by the amazing work of all Paths for All volunteers across the country, going above and beyond, volunteering their time and effort to support their communities. Spending time walking in nature has helped so many people during the COVID-19 pandemic, myself included. I understand how important it is to have good access to walking routes and paths, and I'd like to say a huge thank you to all those volunteers whose contributions have helped to improve the nation's physical and mental health during an unbelievably challenging time. Thanks, Rosanna, for telling us just a bit more about how local path networks like these ones are important in getting us outdoors and out walking. Active Travel Volunteer of the Year award goes to Sarah Lister. Sarah is from Sky for All. It's Sky and Lochalsh Council for Voluntary Organisations. Sarah has been mapping out town centres in Patree and Kyle of Lochal. She wants people with disabilities and long-term health conditions to know where they can walk easily. And that means knowing where things like simple things, but vital things like drop curbs or, or seating is. Let's see what Sarah's been up to. After my sixth brain surgery, I had a stroke, which has caused a weakness down my left side, which means that my walking is not as good as it was. I decided to nominate Sarah for the award because of the amazing work that she's been doing with our project for Paths for All as part of the Sky for All community group, the well partnership that she belongs to with her friend Melanie. They've been working on making 
walks in Sky accessible? Well, me and Sarah met at the Way Forward group where Sarah goes for a bit of entertainment and I was a volunteer there and we got chatting and we were the only people in the group of a similar age. <laughs> yeah. um, and we started going out for coffee and cake and chatting. And I just said to Sarah one day, is there any way you can't get on Sky you'd like to go? And you went, yeah, there's loads of places I haven't been since my stroke and brain surgeries. So we decided to just do it. <laughs> and we just went out walking together places and having cake and then <laughs> yeah. and I said this is really interesting what we're doing we should write a blog about it and we dreamt up the name Sky for All and started writing the blog and it's just snowballed yeah yeah I mean it's just if people if it's a nice day and someone wants to go for a walk they can look at the site and say oh let's go there it's not far and it's a nice short walk she doesn't let her disability stand in the way of anything. And that's one of the main reasons I nominated Sarah is because of her. She's inspiring for people. Sometimes people may think if they're in a wheelchair or they can't walk very far, that it's not for them, but Sarah's actually proof of it. I mean, I'm just doing something I enjoy. We go for walks, we go for lunch and it seems strange to be uh, <laughs> to get an award for doing what I like. The next award is the Active Travel Group of the Year and it goes to Dundee Green Health Partnership in Dundee, of course. This is fascinating. This group helps GPs to prescribe over 40 volunteer-led outdoor activities to people with a range of health issues. Let's hear what the Dundee Green Health Partnership have been up to. I'm Lali, I work for Dundee Volunteer and Voluntary Action. We started a partnership with the Green Health Partnership um, in order to help implement and deliver the green health prescriptions. We know that the partnership wanted to create this new pathway to streamline opportunities for people to engage in outdoor activities, to become more active. We would be able to become the bridge between medical prescribers with locally based opportunities to become engaged with the outdoors and increase people's physical ability. My name is Dr Viola Marx and I'm Dundee's Green Health Partnership Coordinator. The Green Health Partnership aims to bring together the NHS and the third sector together with the council to get people outside and active. As part of that we created the Green Health Prescription Pathway to allow patients to be referred to activities. Rediscovered and D was really developed because we identified that there was a gap. People wanted to cycle and it's quite difficult in Dundee because it's hilly and not everybody's been on a bike in, in a while. We found a place for the project but we had no cycle leaders. Um, so that's really where Lali came in and her involvement and in her free time, you know, she became a cycle leader and started the sessions on a Sunday and then got the whole thing rolling and within a very short amount of time it became one of the most popular projects that we have. When I first was introduced to the idea of being part of this partnership project, I was personally invested on it because I could see like the knock-on and positive effects uh, for the people living in Dundee and uh, an amazing opportunity for the third sector and DVVA to get involved in an initiative that was quite forward thinking and quite innovative. My sister uh, was coming along the bikes so I came to give her company just to get her out and something to do, fresh air, meet other people and I've been coming as well and just enjoying it as much as she has and just kept going with it. and cycling are great ways of getting around Scotland and I think during the pandemic more and more people were out doing just that. I know I was. My dad even bought himself an electric bike during the summer. It can go at some speed. Anyway, let's hear from Michael Matheson, the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure and Connectivity. I'm delighted to join Pass for All Volunteer Awards 2020 
and to celebrate the fantastic work of volunteers right across Scotland. The last few months have highlighted the real importance and the positive impact, both physically and also mentally, that walking, cycling and wheeling can have on our daily lives. Through the creation of safer spaces to encourage people to participate in active travel, volunteers are not only helping to improve our nation's health, they're also helping to support and protect our precious environment here in Scotland, as we see more people making use of active travel. I want to offer my congratulations to Sarah and to Dundee Green Health Partnership for winning their awards and to all of those who were nominated for awards. It's great to be part of these celebrations and to offer my personal thanks for all the hard work that volunteers have undertaken over recent months. I also want to offer you my congratulations for the vital support that you are providing to local communities at this challenging time, helping to support people to lead healthier and happier lifestyles. Thanks, Michael. And I know a lot of people said that they actually enjoyed the quieter streets that was part of lockdown. And many people would like to see cycling and walking infrastructure to become a bigger part of where we live. So this is the Health Walk Volunteer of the Year Award. It goes to Tommy Clark from Leap Sports Scotland in Glasgow. Tackling loneliness is what Tommy's done by creating a walking group in Glasgow called Out to help lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex or questioning people who are not super sporty get out and about. The LGBTIQ plus community often struggles with isolation. Of course, that impacts poorly on mental and physical health. So let's see what Tommy's been up to. Even after the monument had been erected, he didn't stop. The idea of Out on Sundays came from, originally, my friend Bill Gardner. He wanted to do a sporting group. So with the walking group, it is more like a bunch of friends meeting up and going for a walk together. I came in to do more history-typed walks so that there was a bit of variety. And between the two of us, it then grew to a weekly meeting where we would do a park walk where it was more aimed at people with mental health issues what we call a bill walk, which is going from point A to point B, a history walk, and then what we would call a health walk. And from that, we've done things like litter pickup, and so we're cleaning up areas that we're going at the same time. Tommy makes a big difference to people that come along to the walks. Because he's got such a big personality and he's so kind and he really cares about everybody. And I think it was Valentine's Day and the walk, by the time we got to the end, he showed us a map and we'd stopped in a love heart. Things like that are so good, he's so creative. Every so often, whenever I've got the opportunity, I will be able to do a filmed walk and I'll put it up so that anyone can enjoy it if they aren't able to get out. It's given people that are trapped in their homes because of underlying health issues it's given them a lifeline to be able to get outside and see things that they wouldn't normally. Last year I was diagnosed with liver disease and borderline diabetes and I was essentially told if I didn't change my lifestyle I would die. So from doing health walks I've noticed a decrease in my weight and my health has improved. One of our regular walkers, they found that their wellness and well-being has improved so much so that they could return to work. Altogether, that makes what we do so beneficial, just not only to ourselves, but to the community that join us. It was just the perfect fit for Tommy because he just does so much work and the stuff he does with Out on Sundays is so fantastic. He really deserved the award. Anyone that wants to come and walk and be friendly are welcome to come and walk with us. This is the Health Walk Group of the Year Awards. It goes to Aging Well Midlothian. Let me tell you a little bit about them. The 40 walk leaders usually lead 15 health walks every week. Of course, the lockdown put paid to that, so they phoned round the 650 walkers, helping to organise shopping and medication. But let me tell you one little story that struck me. After talking to one walker, a volunteer realised how scared she was to leave the home, and that's not an uncommon thing. She went to her house to help her cross the road and take a walk in the park just for a few minutes. 
That was enough to give her the courage to walk every morning in her local park. Let's hear the story of aging well Midlothian in their own words. So the Aging Well project is a physical activity project for the over 50s and it's run with volunteers. So they're the lead, they shape the project. We've started off with health walks and we've slowly progressed into other activities as well. My wife decided she was going to join the Aging Well walking group and I wasn't too keen but I decided I'd go along with it and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. I think it must be about eight years now, approximately. I, I couldn't tell you exactly. But then I eventually volunteered to become a walk leader and haven't regretted that either. We've got about 650 members and between them, they've managed to telephone most of them, all of them, and find out initially how they were coping at the start of lockdown. And then later on, they were doing regular phone calls, especially to those that live alone, felt really isolated and then as lockdown started to ease they were able to offer one-to-one -one walks with those that weren't able to get out on their own or felt just a wee bit uncomfortable leaving the house. They're a wonderful lot. The project has been a very successful project and it's been running for over 20 years now um, so they're just a very committed and lovely bunch and they they make my job wonderful. <laughs> Aging Well has a huge social benefit. A lot of the people do come to walk, but they, they, if you ask them, they tell you they will come more for the social aspect. And altogether, that is a very much more important part of the whole um, project. It's a great social thing as well as good exercise and fresh air, you know. And we walk in all weathers. We don't shut down any time at all. All the walk leaders, they communicate with each other, try to come up with new ideas for walks, etc. And it's, it's good teamwork, you know. It's a sense of belonging to something important, really, and enjoyable. Well, I was very pleased. I was surprised, but I was very pleased to hear about it, you know. It is great to be acknowledged. Um, and yeah, they're all delighted just receiving the award. Yeah. We're obviously very privileged um, to have been nominated by Vivian and all very pleased indeed. This is the Dementia Friendly Volunteer Award. It goes to Donald Martin from Healthy Valleys in Lanark in South Lanarkshire. The bond that Donald has with his mum who has dementia and who he cares for has played a role in him setting up these dementia friendly walks. And they're to support people living with the condition and let them feel safe in the great outdoors and let them get the joy and the experience of being outdoors. Donald's gonna tell us what he gets from the role of leader and what it means to him. Take it away, Donald. Well, I'd worked for years and then uh, due to telehealth, I uh, had to stop for a year or so, I was at a bit of a loose end. Uh, and near the start of that, I was looking around for things to do and I'd seen an advert in the local health centre for various projects which are run by a local group, Healthy Valleys. I've been involved in dementia. My mother has dementia and has had for a few years, so we've designed one or two walking courses round about Lanark which are dementia friendly. and have a wee insight into what's involved in it. Every case is different. Some it's just mild cognitive impairments. Other people really struggle to do anything, but uh, a very positive thing, getting them out in the fresh air. Uh, and sometimes it can restore a, you know, a memories to people who possibly in their past have had uh, walking experience or, uh, you know, have been out in company. Donald and I actually did our walk leader training together back in January 2018. We've known, we've known each other right from the start uh, and I just feel we've been in this uh, journey together and he's been a real support and, and, a, and a real help throughout, throughout the, the whole project. I think when you get somebody like Donald who who gives, you know, without thinking about it and really doesn't look for any sort of credit, um, it's fantastic and we should really yeah, be recognising it. Embarrassing in both counts. <laughs> I 
I don't, I don't feel it's justified and it's, uh, it's, it's nice, but I feel it a wee bit embarrassing. The routine's good, any routine's good. Uh, getting out in the fresh air's good. And giving something back's nice, you know, it's, it's fine taking things, getting things, but it's nice to feel you're part of something bigger and you're adding, adding to society, not just taking. That's quite a nice feeling. This is the Cancer Friendly Volunteer of the Year Award. Now, they're joint winners this year. Marion McCormick and Karen Cromar from Walker in East Renfrewshire and kindness is absolutely at the core of what these ladies do. They visit walkers in hospital and they adapt routes and lengths of walks for anyone that are undergoing cancer treatment. Let's hear what the ladies have to say. I get a lot out of volunteering because I actually feel that there's purpose and um, I've got to know some wonderful people that I would never have come in, in, in contact with and um, I feel that the small thing that I'm doing actually makes a difference to, the, to them so it's, it's not much, much time in a week and um, I do get an awful lot from it. You get so much from the people that you volunteer with, the group and the the ladies and gentlemen that you take out walking, they are so appreciative of you giving up your time that it's, you know, it's just a good feeling for me as well as for them being so much appreciated. They're, they're so enthusiastic. Um, they've been with our project two and a half, three years now and, you know, from the onset, um, Marin and Karen came along um, to a walk that we already um, offer just to see what, what the type of walks were and straight away I could see they were very very enthusiastic. There was a new Macmillan Cancer project established in East Rain two years ago and uh, Marion and Karen straight away uh, wanted to do the training um, because they wanted their group to be as inclusive as possible. Well the walk is very low impact so it's not for people who like to go out hiking and um, it's for people who might find themselves on their own looking for some com um, company um, people who aren't as fit as they maybe have been want to improve their fitness and uh, more than anything else for sociability it's for people um, who haven't got the company at home come out on a Monday and join the walk get some fresh air and have a coffee afterwards on a good natter. It was amazing actually yes um, because uh, our group leaders had you know put us forward without any prior knowledge so to just get the email to say you'd won was just, and it was lovely. And then going back to the group and saying that we had won this, it was just so great to see their faces and they were so pleased for us. It was just, yeah, lovely feeling. Now this award is Project Coordinator of the Year. Helen Campbell is from KA Leisure in North Ayrshire. And technology is playing an even greater role during this pandemic in keeping us all connected, I suppose. And Helen has kept in constant contact with all our walk leaders, even stayed on the phone to an ambulance while it arrived at the home of a walk leader who'd fallen ill with COVID-19. And she's been doing virtual walking videos when she's out and about, doing strength and balance exercises. Great idea. So let's see what our coordinator of the year has to say. We're part of the Active Lifestyles team and we run a number of different health projects. We've got at least 40 volunteers at the moment. Helen does a lot of work with the volunteers, but during lockdown, uh, I feel that she went above and beyond what our job role entailed. I think for most of the volunteers, it's all about that they're giving something back into their community. They're not only helping others, but they're helping themselves with their own mental health. A lot of um, people are on their own now, so they quite like the walking groups for the chit chat. I think the walkers really appreciate it. I just absolutely love it. I have so much praise for them to give up their time. So we've got some walk leaders that are in their 80s and they're still leading walks and they never let me down. I mean, what more can I ask for? Having somebody like Helen on the other end of the phone to talk to, one particular volunteer, 
took ill um, and she was on the phone until the ambulance arrived. I've seen the hard work that she's put in and I think she deserves it. Um, Helen herself uh, likes to walk down to her allotment, which is her kind of wee social haven. What she would do is on WhatsApp, she would walk with the volunteers. I think a lot of them are quite lonely. Um, during the coronavirus and the phone calls have really helped them. We have been doing WhatsApp walks, so I've been taking some who are able out in a walk just through via their phone on WhatsApp, so they'll walk in their own area. But we've got some people who join the walk as well who are shielding and they'll join us from their own house. And I think emotionally and mentally that has helped them because they're still seeing the outdoors, they've got the chit chat. We had to adapt, but of course a lot of our walk leaders and my participants don't do WhatsApp and all that, so it was teaching them how to do it. I couldn't believe it. I was actually taken aback at first, I think, because I thought I've only been doing what I do. It's, it's just my job. I'm very fortunate to have such a job that I love so much. So H Helen enjoys her job, um, which is a real, a real people person, um, and she doesn't like to see anyone struggling. And during lockdown, I think we all need that wee bit of a helping hand, and Helen's been there for people. This is the Step Count Champion Award. It goes to Kasia Smith from North Ayrshire Council. Now I know if you're home working, it's hard to motivate yourself to go and do that exercise, but Path for All Step Count Challenge can get you motivated, get you out, get you competitive. And that's why Kasia's team nominated her. She got them out, she got them motivated. She'll tell us how. I got involved in Step Count Challenge through my workplace um, uh, at North Ayrshire Council. An uh, active travel team organises those challenges for all the members. We won for the council, so my team won. Uh, I'm saying my team because my uh, my team members nominated me for a captain. Um, so that's another thing that motivated me to do well. I just wanted to lead uh, by example and just do well so, so they could kind of be motivated by that and, and try hardest as well. It's quite hard during lockdown, you're restricted to certain area or distance you can do, you can walk around. So after a while, the walks become a bit boring, uh, a bit uh, monotonous. Um, so I've tried to make it more attractive by, for example, encouraging my team members to find a new route. Um, or um, taking a picture of local heritage, for example, one day. Or the other day, I would ask them to take the pictures of spring flowers because it was springtime at that time. They never told me they nominated me, actually. Louise never mentioned anything. I only found out when I won. <laughs> so that was a huge surprise. Um, I mean, it was a great... Um, it, it was great to see that we won for the council, for the, for the workplace. So that was amazing achievement during the lockdown. It was it was great and it felt great and I was proud of my team. The biggest benefit uh, of walking during lockdown was for me personally reconnecting with my teenage daughter. Um, it's very difficult to to do that uh, in current um, lifestyle when they constantly uh, stuck to the computer screens and that gave us opportunity to talk again and reconnect and find that relationship, rediscover that relationship again. For me, that was the biggest benefit. I think it will be something that we carry forward because um, I've noticed that she enjoyed it too. Uh, she shared things that she wouldn't normally have a chance or time to share um, and she found the benefit of that. Um, so I think we will carry on. So remember, and just make some time to keep active during the day. Walking, cycling, even climbing. And Joe Fitzpatrick, the Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, has a message for the volunteers who've done so much in getting Scotland out and walking. Hello, I'm delighted to take part in the Pass for All Volunteer Awards 2020. Although this is the third year I've had the privilege of joining you, this year was always going to be different. These awards are an excellent opportunity to celebrate, recognise and thank every single one of the volunteers across Scotland for your hard work and effort throughout this, this challenging year. 
Once again, it's been truly inspiring to hear and learn about the outstanding work that volunteers have done in their local communities and how they've collectively made walking a bigger part of daily life and helped incite important behavioural change. So congratulations to Tommy, to Aging Well Midlothian, Helen, Donald, Marion and Kasia for your hard work and dedication and to everyone else who was nominated in each of the categories. I'd especially like to extend my thanks to the amazing work volunteers have carried out during the current pandemic by adapting your work to help out people in a variety of other ways. Personally, on behalf of the Scottish Government and as the Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who volunteers their time and whose valuable contribution to helping people to cope with the current situation by feeling less socially isolated and looking after their physical and mental health. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe, for that. Uh, well, even the most active among us need a rest sometimes, but I just want to say what a pleasure and a privilege it's been to be part of these awards again. So many incredibly inspiring stories. You are the people that keep our communities going. You are literally a lifeline. So thank you so much for everything you've done. You should be extremely proud of yourselves. Anyway, I'm going to leave the last word to Chief Officer Ian Finlay, because I, I'm going to have to get my step count up. Thank you once again. Keep walking. Well, although from Crapack Hills, one of my favourite walks here around about Comrie, huge congratulations to all the winners of awards today. So this is our 11th volunteer awards, although it is our very first virtual one. And I just love this event. It's one of the personal highlights for me each year. I just find it so inspiring and humbling to hear these fantastic stories of people who have given up their skills and their time and their energy for others. And of course, today we've had the added bonus of a virtual tour around Scotland to just hear so many great stories from passionate people. So I have the lovely job of saying some thank yous. Firstly, I'd like to thank Fiona for superbly hosting the event. Fiona, you really are a true friend of Path for All. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Rosanna Cunningham, Michael Matheson and Joe Fitzpatrick for your kind words, but also really importantly for your support for Path for All. I'd like to say thank you to my colleagues, the Path for All team, for putting this show together. And I'd like to thank yourselves who are watching and listening to this, for being here today to help us celebrate, but also for the support you've shown. But my final and my biggest thanks are for the volunteers and the volunteer coordinators. Quite simply, without you, we couldn't do what we do. So a big heartfelt thank you from me and from everyone at Paths for All. I know today is a special day and we've had some special winners. But in my book, every single volunteer is a winner. So thank you. So it just remains for me to say thanks very much for being part of this celebration. And please stay safe. Thanks very much. Bye. And just so you can have a look at the view, and because I'm standing in this lovely view, just behind me is Comrie. So I'll get out of the way and you'll see Comrie and then I'll just pan round for a minute. can never be lonely if you put your hand in mine I can never be lonely if you walk with me this time I can never be lonely if you promise you won't it's nice to feel you're part of something bigger and you're adding adding to society not just taking it's just a good feeling for me as well as for them being so much appreciated. They're just a very committed and lovely bunch and they they make my job wonderful. <laughs> and you walk right out that oh, door. Good, good and it's good for Mother Nature. So we're not trying to destroy Mother Nature, we're actually trying to help it from getting hurt for like all the bad parts, all the weeds and all that. So yeah. 
that this really inspired me. I just absolutely love it. I have so much praise for them to give up their time. I, I do this because I really care about the reserve and, and I'm here every day so it makes sense for me to, to do these things. I'm really quite humbled actually. Knowing that I make, make a difference to the local area is, is, is what it's all about. It's a sense of belonging to something important really and enjoyable. I think if people are struggling with their life and they can't get on track and they've either failed at school or they've had a tough time and they, they don't feel like they can go somewhere, this, class, this course is setting me up for life again. So I'm really, I really, recommend to anyone that's having a struggle in their life. The opportunity to thank any volunteer, I think the words all volunteers, because those people who know that what they're doing matters, know that it's being felt, even if it isn't them that's being named specifically for it. And every volunteer that gets an award through Paths for All this year, I know that they're representing the others as well.